Welcome to the next section of our course. And in this section, we are going to talk about building agents and tools. So finally, in this course with the generative AI, AI agents and multi-agent systems, we are going to talk about how we can start building the agents and toolings. We already talked about what agents are in our earlier sections of this course, that AI agent can be defined in several ways. Some defines agents as a fully autonomous system that operates independently over an extended period of time or using various tools to accomplish complex tasks. We saw that before, so we know what is AI agent. We also saw that the AI agent enhances the effectiveness of the AI system which will be enabling the LLMS to interact with the external world. So what that really means is that these AI agents will think, decide, and act for a given task, which is the power of an AI agent. Because all these days, we know that until our last section of this course, we tried to connect a large language model, we asked a question, and we got the response back. That is what we have been getting so far. It's pretty much like the chat GPT, right? You ask a question to the chat GPT, it gives you the response. That is what it does all the time. But what if you want to leverage the large language model even further? Well, that's when the AI agent comes in. But again, in the context of the AI agent itself, what exactly uh, is the AI agent going to do for the act operation as we can see over here? We also saw that for the thinking, large language model comes in because it understands things, what the user input is, and then it will decide, the large language model will decide how to create the, the, the action plan for any given request from a user. So the think and decide operations are gonna be done by the large language model. But the act is something which the large language model cannot do, but it can invoke a tool which can be bound or which is bound to the large language model and the act operation is going to be done by the AI agent for you and that's what is the external operation which the AI agent is going to be doing for you and for that as I told you the AI agent requires what is called as an tools which are like an external functions or utilities that agents can use to perform real world action like reading files, query database, and things. So that's what is the tool. So you can basically think of tools like a uh, like an access for the large language model to interact with the external systems. So in this section, we are going to see how we can build this AI agent and tools in LangChain. So agents in Lang chains are very easy to build because the complex agents can be built using LangSmith. So there is a different package altogether. There is a different platform altogether. So you need to be using LangSmith for doing that matter, which we are not going to be going in this course because this course is not really a development course. Again, if you are really interested in doing all those things, you get, you need to head over to my other course, which I talked about how you can use LangChain and LangSmith to build a complex agent and things. But in this course, we're going to see how we can build a very, very minimalistic agent which can be used to perform the tool bindings and tool callings uh, with our large language model, which we are going to be doing in this entire rest of the course. So this section, this video is very, very important. So I will highly, highly recommend you to go through this video a couple of times if you don't really grasp what I'm talking about. But yes, this lecture is very, very important and this entire section is super important. So please go ahead and watch multiple times. Well, as that said, you can see that agents in LangChain are very easy to build and I will show you in a code snippet in our next slide, like how it can be built. And we can also build tools in LangChain, which is also very, very easy. Like you can also think of that as, an, as a method or which can be invoked after binding that tool with an agent and you can just use it, use it pretty much like how you do it with the normal function calls. That is what is the tools, uh, and we are gonna be using the tool tag to perform this operation. So this is how we can build an agent and tools in LangChain. So let's quickly see how an agent can be built in LangChain. It's very, very simple. See, the agent over here is gonna be initialized using a method called as initialize agent. So this is what is the method which is used to initialize an agent. It requires tools, see? 
these are the tools that you are going to be uh, configuring. So it can be just one tool. As you can see, there is a tool called a summarize tool, but you can have multiple different tools. You can have a search tool, you can have the browser invocation tool, playwright tool, or maybe addition tool, simple thing, Wikipedia search tool, complex thing. You can have all those tools configured over here in the tools array. And then you need to have a large language model over here because this is the one which is going to be taking the decision. So you configure an agent, which is going to have all the tools. And this guy, the LLM is a decision maker of what exactly needs to happen and which tool it needs to invoke. And that tool is going to be invoked based on the tool which has been invoked by this large language model. And then you need to specify the agent type and there are different types of agent types available. So don't worry about that yet. And then we are going to say verbose is true so that it can show you the the logs and things so that is how you create an agent see as simple as this just like one line with a couple of parameters then you're done this is how you create an agent in langchain next up is going to be uh, how you can build a simple tool with langchain see this is what is the tool oh look at that that's very straightforward you can say like karthik this is the tool are you talking about well yes you see that this is a tool to perform a simple addition operation so i'm going to say uh, def uh, add numbers basically it's a, a way i declare the method and then i'm going to set the explicitly that what parameter that i'm going to passing in it's like an integer value and the return type is integer as well uh, and then i'm going to say a description over here that uh, add two numbers and return a result so this is basically going to be helpful for the large language model while it is going to invoke uh, the tool so that is very very important this description is very important and then this is the return value for the two integer after doing addition so this is a tool i have decorated that with at tool annotation so that is the simple tool that we can build and this is exactly what is the tools in langchain but you may now have a question saying well this kind of simple addition can even be done with a large language model right why do we need to have a tool for that matter you asked a very, very correct question. But what if your large language model needs external file access or database access or maybe browser access to perform these operations? How will you do that? Just tell me now. Just think about it and tell me. Well, you can't. You need the power of the tools to perform this operation. So tools are like a legs for the large language model or maybe hands for the large language model to go and operate on the external files, external databases, maybe even Jenkins, Jira, Slack APIs, and access the requirement documents or log files. All these things comes handy only or maybe comes reachable only if you give your large language model the access to these uh, systems with the power of tools. So tools are the key component or driving component to make this happen. So that is what is the power of tool. You can't just write and add uh, tools, which even the large language model can do. I've just shown you a simple example, really, but you're not going to do that from uh, or maybe writing as a tool, to be honest. But this is how is the tool going to be operating and you're going to be using it for your uh, testing purpose as well and this is exactly what i was showing you in the mcp if you remember where the mcp server will act as a protocol which is going to uh, access the external file systems like local access uh, of the uh, git or the files slack uh, puppeteer playwright uh, and the google drive for that matter so you can access any of these with the power of the mcp protocol and the tooling support so that's what mcp was doing that's what i showed you a demo even in our first uh, section of this course that's exactly what the tooling does in reality well as i said for accessing a log file from a tool this is how we write a simple tool so this is a custom tool that i have written over here like summarize logs where it says read and return a summary of the first few lines of each dot log file and this is the directory where you're gonna iterate through the list of all the directory um, directories we have got we're gonna open the path uh, and join the directories uh, along with the file names which is existing in that particular directory uh, and then we are going to just read through all the uh, lines of the file and then we're going to add it 
uh, in the array using the extend method. You remember the same thing we did even in our earlier sections of this course. We're going to do that. And that's going to have all of this. See, so it's going to store the uh, details of the file with the file uh, name, colon, the line details. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to read the first 50 lines of each log file. So I'm storing all of them in the array. I'm joining all the logs uh, with the new uh, characters, uh, maybe new lines. And then I'm returning the details as a string to the large language model once this guy has been called. So this is how I actually do it while I create a custom tools or custom logging tool or summarizing tool. So this is how we can let the large language model to access our log folders. Look at that. This is amazing, right? Now you are giving your large language model the access to the logs folder. If so far it is clear, we are going to be building how we can actually call or create a log file accessor with the power of the AI agent. And this is the this is the crusp of what we are going to be doing. But don't worry about this diagram yet. I will explain you while we reach there. But that's the goal of this section for you to see how we can build an AI agent, how we can write tools, and how we can summarize the log files that we have got within our own machine and get the results back.